this single cell organism has a problem. Water from outside is constantly flowing inside. Without some way to manage this onslaught of water, the organism will explode. Fortunately, these organisms have developed internal mechanisms that constantly pump water back out. So let's take a look at why water is rushing inside these microorganisms and how they've evolved to deal with it. To understand what's happening, we need to talk about osmosis. But don't worry, it's simpler than it sounds. Water naturally flows from areas with fewer dissolved particles to areas with more. Water isn't happy until there's a uniform concentration of dissolved particles everywhere, and it will relentlessly try to make that happen. Single-cell microorganisms are packed with proteins, salts, and other molecules. Outside in the pond water, it's comparatively pure. This creates a one-way street where water constantly rushes in, moving from low concentration to high concentration. But the particles are stuck within the cell's membrane. They can't escape. So more and more water rushes in, trying in vain to equalize the concentration. Enter our hero, the contractile vacuole, a brilliantly efficient microscopic pump. Watch how the contractile vacuole in this single-cell paratrixiliate slowly fills with water. Once the vacuole fills completely, what scientists call the diastole phase, something remarkable happens. The vacuole suddenly contracts, the systole phase, forcefully expelling water through a specialized pore to the outside world. The process is ongoing. The empty vacuole immediately begins collecting and ejecting more water from inside the cell, repeating the process several times a minute for the organism's entire life. Different microorganisms have evolved varying numbers and arrangements of these vacuoles. While organisms such as Thuricola and Vorticella might have just one vacuole, larger organisms, like most Paramecia, typically have two or more. This makes perfect sense. The larger the cell, the more surface area is exposed to water influx, and the more pumping capacity it needs. It's an elegant example of how biological form follows function. The contractile vacuole complex in a paramecium is particularly well-developed and visible under our microscope. You can clearly see the radiating canals extending outward from the vacuole like the spokes of a wheel. While many ciliates have some form of collecting channels, in paramecia, these radiating canals are particularly prominent. They function as a distributed collection system, gathering excess water from throughout the cell's cytoplasm and channeling it efficiently toward the vacuole. The radiating canals gradually fill with water, becoming more distinct as they swell. This water feeds into the expanding vacuole. Then, in a fraction of a second, the vacuole contracts dramatically and empties through a pore in the cell membrane, only to immediately begin filling again. In paramecia, you'll typically find two or more of these systems working in rhythm to manage water balance throughout this active organism. So how does this microscopic plumbing system actually work? The entire process requires cellular energy in the form of ATP, the same molecular fuel that powers our own muscles. This energy powers specialized protein pumps that actively move water against its concentration gradient. At the molecular level, the membranes of the collecting canals are studded with specialized proteins called aquaporins, microscopic channels that allow water molecules to pass into the canals while blocking larger particles such as ions or solutes. These aquaporins greatly increase the efficiency of water collection. Surrounding the vacuole itself is a network of protein filaments, somewhat similar to tiny muscles. When triggered by calcium ions, these filaments contract in a coordinated fashion, squeezing the vacuole like a microscopic water balloon 
and forcing water out through the discharge pore. The filling and emptying cycle is precisely controlled by cellular signals, ensuring that water balance is maintained regardless of how active the organism is or how dilute its environment becomes. The contractile vacuole represents one of nature's most elegant solutions to a fundamental cellular challenge, maintaining water balance. This allows single-celled organisms to thrive in environments that would otherwise destroy them. What's perhaps most remarkable is that larger animals, including humans, don't use contractile vacuoles at all. As multicellular organisms evolved, they developed entirely different solutions to water management, specialized tissues and organs like kidneys that serve the entire body. Yet, in the microscopic world, these pulsing vacuoles continue their rhythmic work as they have for over a billion years, collecting, contracting, and expelling, maintaining the delicate balance that makes unicellular life possible. Thanks for joining us on today's look inside the microcosmos. We hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel so you won't miss our next adventure.